we're now going to look back to the mid-1960s and the struggle that Peter Morgan had to find a replacement engine for the ageing Plus 4. A good friend of mine, um, Peter Wilkes, I, I'd met him on um, in Hill Climbs. He made a Rover special um, with uh, Spen King and uh, it was quite a useful little car and he was in the same class as us. And then in 66 he asked to come over and I said, yeah, come over and we have, have a bite to eat, you see. And uh, he offered me two things. He said, look, we, we would like a sports car. Would you like to come in with us? Because we, we, we'd like to build a sports car at Railways. And uh, secondly, would you like the this latest um, uh, Rail V8 engine, which I had vaguely heard about, the, the Buick engine. But um, no, we went out for lunch together and I, I, I said to him, well, no, I think I'd like to soldier on on my own. Maybe I'll regret it uh, at a later time. Uh, but I would like the engine. Uh, and he said, oh, he said, well, that's no, no problem. That's all, all right. And um, that's really where it started and where all the problems of getting the V8 engine started. In the centre of the chassis, now here's a separate gearbox. This is a Moss four-speed gearbox, which is used in conjunction with the Triumph engine. It's pulled back here to get the right wedge distribution, and there's an extension shaft between the gearbox and the clutch housing, which lies right on the back of the Triumph TR4 four-cylinder engine. Here they are, but of course we shan't be seeing them for very long, because Triumph have now started using six-cylinder engines for sports cars, this engine hasn't got a very long life in front of it and it raises the question very acutely of what engine is going to be used in future in the hottest Morgans. I thought, well, with this development, no way can I run the company and do the development at the same time. So I remembered Maurice Owen, who got on to me and said, look, do you want uh, any one-offs built because I'd be only too glad? And um, I gave him a ring and said, how about coming in on this? Which he did. And uh, he located a Buick engine, which we then sent to Rovers for them to modify as near to their specification as they could, which they did, and then we eventually fitted it in a, in a car. Well, it's quite interesting because actually I'm, I'm pretty certain we got our car on the road before they got theirs. Um, but um, anyway, got it on the road, and it was quite an impressive motor car. Uh, but at that time, apart from having um, quite a lot of verbal assistance, um, from Rovers, um, uh, from uh, Peter Wilkes, um, not much happened, you see. And uh, the next thing that occurred was that Rovers were taken over by Triumph, Standard Triumph. And obviously something happened internally whereby they didn't particularly want Morgan to have the Rover V8 engine when the Triumph was still on a straight six, because when we were on the TR5 at that time. And um, so the next thing that occurred was that I was asked to go over and see um, my friend Harry Webster, who I'd had a lot of contact with over the uh, Vanguard and TR days. And um, uh, Harry was in charge of engineering there. And uh, we went round, we had lunch, and we went round, and he showed me all the engines that were coming out, the Stag V8, the slant engine they were building for Saabs, the um, mentioned in the Dolomite uh, four-cylinder and all these engines, and said, uh, look, any, if you're interested in any, do you have them? And I said to him, I said, well, look, we're virtually on the road with our prototype. I said, I want to see how that works out. It, it's, it's ideal, it's the right weight, um, and looks like being the right part, just what we want. Uh, and I'm, I should do with, uh, go along with that first. And so we left it at that. But I, I still think that there was some reason why one was asked to kind of find an alternative engine. Then anyway, we went along and, and we'd actually, I think virtually got ours on the road, or Marcy got it uh, about running by then, in a kind of modified plus four it was really, because uh, the, the, the actual pr pr production plus eight was quite different from the, the original um, uh, eight, well, modified prototype eight. And anyway, next thing that happens is that um, I, I keep going there, you know, saying, what, what about this engine? And then I think it was, they said, oh, we'd like to have a word with you about this, you know. And um, I went up and saw, yes, I said, we'll, we'll tell you what, what, ha what will happen with this. And uh, I saw George Farmer. And he gave an absolute bombshell when he turned to me and he said, oh, you know, you've got to get permission from General Motors. So I said, I jolly well did. And I said, look, I've been working now for over 12 months on the prototype. 
it's virtually on the red, it's, it's running now, and you now tell me that probably the whole thing won't happen at all, you know. Uh, how, and I said, how do I get permission, you see, and this and that. And I said, do I write to them or do you? And he said, oh, well, we, we'll write to them. And so I said, OK. And so, um, uh, duly we left it at that. I came back here in the thought, and I, I knew, i gotten his name just offhand, but I knew I had uh, somebody quite keen on campaigning a Morgan in um, Canada, in uh, Canadian motor races and, and um, uh, around uh, Detroit that way, uh, with the plus four. And so I wrote to him and, and said, look, we, we want to use the uh, Buick engine, the ex-Buick engine in the Morgan. Anything you can do to assist this would be greatly appreciated. I didn't know, even know his position in, in GM, but I subsequently found out that he was one of the chiefs of engineering, actually, either layout or transmission or something. And anyway, to cut a long story short, within two weeks, uh, pa uh, George Farmer received a letter back from GM's, uh, bearing in mind that when he wrote to them, he asked for permission to use the engine in the Morgan and the Triumph. The letter came back saying they had no objection to the engine being used in the Morgan, and they didn't mention the Triumph at all. <laughs> so we actually got the engine. Well, that seemed great, you know, and, and they, they, they didn't deny that what had happened and this and that, and they said, well, probably it's because it's four numbers. But anyway, they don't, they don't mind you using this engine. And it was under agreement for, I think it's either five or seven years. That's why it couldn't be used, of course, in, in any um, uh, Triumph or MG until that time had lapsed. Um, well, the next thing that occurred was still I didn't get anywhere with the engine. So I rang Harry Webster and I said, look, Harry, I'm a bit fed up. I haven't got a, a definite answer about supplies, production supplies for this engine. Um, I'd like, I'd like a word with Sir Donald Stokes, who was Sir Donald then, not, not Lord. And um, Harry Webster said, oh, well, leave it with me. And then shortly after, he rang back and said, well, George Turnbull, who was high up in, in uh, Lanyon's at that time, he said, George Turnbull and myself will come over and see you. And they duly did, took the car out for a test run and said it was quite good. And I'll always remember George saying, yes, Peter, you can have the engine, providing you don't make too many of these cars and providing you make them in much the same uh, style as they are now. And that was it. <laughs> and we finally got the engine. But, oh, it was it was the most difficult because that, that all took place, it must have been over a period of at least nine or 12 months, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. I've ne never had such a job in getting an engine, but I was quite determined to get it because I knew how suitable it was. And um, I'm glad to say, speaking now, it's the uh, longest, certainly on a four-wheeler, the longest engine we've ever had. we can say that those who have been writing the obituaries on the Morgan have been jumping the gun. The whole thing is premature. Morgan are well advanced with this prototype which has been specially designed to meet the new American regulations on engine emission, for example. There isn't any very great problem because all the engine manufacturers in this country who are interested in the American market are already working on the emission problem and under the bonnet here is a light alloy V8 engine which is not only going to meet the American regulations, but which is also going to give the Morgan more power, more performance than it's ever had before. Also designed to meet the regulations is a new braking system on this car, a dual braking system with disc brakes on the front and with drum brakes on the rear. And there's a new suspension system at the back, or at least a modified version of the traditional suspension system, especially designed to cope with the extra power and also to give more comfort than Morgans have had before. Now there you can see the revised cockpit. This is not in its final form. The car is a prototype. There is a new face here. There finally will be a face here which will meet the American impact regulations and also a steering column which will meet the regulations not only in terms of the column coming back under a frontal impact but also in the, the steering wheel going forward under the impact if the driver hits it. Thank <laughs> you.